evening and welcome. Um, my name is James Mann and very, very welcome to the show this evening. I'm joined by Elder Pass from California, Melvin Thomas from Alabama. Um, both of the gentlemen in question are Mormons and you are, I may be wrong, correct me if I am, would you be regarded as missionaries? Yeah. Um, essentially, and they're based here in the Sheffield area and they're going to be, they've been traveling around the world as you guys do, um, spreading the word. And they're just going to tell us a little bit about Mormonism, where it comes from, and I'm just going to go start off and go right back to the start. So if you wouldn't mind telling me, what is Mormonism? It's <laughs> a very good question, James. It's like Mormonism, what it is, is it's, it's a Christian, Christian view of, I guess, a Christian a branch of Christianity. So about 200 years ago, it start, we, we believe that a young boy named Joseph Smith wanted to know which church to join. And so... He went and he was reading, reading the Bible, and there was much religious excitement going on. And so what happened is he, he prayed, and he wanted to know which church he should join. In answer to his prayer, he saw God and Jesus Christ. And as they appeared to him, he asked them the question, which church should I join? Because, you know, as we all know, there's, there's 38,000 Christian churches <laughs> on the exactly. earth. So he, he was reading in the Bible, and it said, if there's one God, there's one faith, there's one baptism. There's one simple way for doing everything. And so he was really confused why there were so many religious arguments and wars started because of it. And so in answer to his prayer, God and Jesus Christ said that the church that Christ originally established on the earth had fallen away. And that man had interpreted the Bible and put their own twist on things. You know, I, I think we can see that today. A lot of churches changing views and viewpoints to, I guess, adjusting to society mm -hmm. and things like that. And so what Joseph Smith did is when he asked him, there was no church on the earth, and so he was called to be a prophet, a modern-day Moses, I guess, mm -hmm. and bring back Jesus Christ to true church. And after that happened, I guess we have this book called the Book of Mormon, which teaches of Jesus Christ. And this book was written in the Americas, the ancient Americas, about over 2,000 years ago. And so Joseph Smith was led by an angel to discover this, and it was written in a Reformed Egyptian. And as he translated it into English, we read this along with the Bible. Okay. And I guess, yeah, that we believe both are the word of God, and we believe that God still speaks to man today through a prophet. I guess that's the, I guess the, the history behind our church. Yeah. The, what, the, what, in Western Europe, essentially, there still is a stigma that Mormonism is a type of cult, um, even though you, neither of you seem like you're wearing hoods. <laughs> um, you don't seem like you're forcing anything upon anyone. Um, when I met you yesterday, the, 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 the two gentlemen in question were both very friendly, very open. I've met Mormons all over America, very friendly and open. Um, do you think that the stigma, that prejudice is still there, that kind of like, oh, Mormonism is a cult. It's not actually a fairly, you know, it's a 21st century religion, essentially, now. Yeah, what you say, Adam Thomas? See, I'd say, um, in, in a lot of ways, our church is, is misunderstood and misrepresented. And if it wasn't, then we wouldn't have a, a purpose. Um, we, we'd technically be out of a job if there was no uh, misrepresentation. But I'd say it's it's slowly um, that, that idea is starting to dissipate and people are starting to learn about our church. They're starting to learn that we're not you know, all robots, <laughs> that there's a man behind the tie, and that, that we are real people with, with passions and, and faults and flaws, just like everyone else, but people who have a strong belief that that God and, and Jesus Christ exists and that the, the church that he establishes back on the earth again. And so yeah, we, we're just real people with, with convictions really about those things. And are you, I feel like I'm asking this now, um, are you born Mormon or can you join? Um, or is there a divide between that? No, no, I, I mean, I think it's actually, it's a really good question. I, I was born into the church, I guess you could say. But I think we all have our own choices in life. I think we all disobey our parents. That's true. We all try to choose our own path in life. And so even though I was born into the church, I, I did a lot of research and study myself. So when I was about 17 or 18, the I guess the church standpoint is, oh, you'll go on a mission when you're 19, if you'd like. And I, I told myself, I'm not going to give up two years of my life to do something I don't believe in. Mm -hmm. So I studied into Catholicism, Jehovah's Witness, born-again Christians, Methodist, Protestant, everything. And I didn't get the same feeling that I, that, that I did. I've heard some people say that, oh, it's because you're going back to your roots, what you're brought up with, mm -hmm. when really it's, it's not. Like, I received an answer from God, and so that's, that's why I stick with, with what I believe in, about the, the Book of Mormon being, being the truth along with the Bible. Is it similar to, say, 
you know, it's very, very common both in the UK and in Ireland. Um, priests get a calling. Um, you receive a calling from God or from a higher being, essentially, telling you that your life and your path moving forward is dedicated to spreading the word. And is it similar to that? Do you get this almost like, and some people may laugh, um, other people may not, but the reality is this has existed for hundreds of years. Do, do, you, do you actually feel somewhere inside that you've got a calling to do this, to be here right now? What do you think? What, what I'm going to say with all my heart, yes. I know that, that this is the place that I'm supposed to be. Um, because we have a prophet on the earth today, he's someone that can communicate with God and in essence speaks for God. And so we, as missionaries, when we're 19, we send in an application and then the prophet, he would pray about it. And then they would send you wherever God needed you to be. And I, I know with all my heart that this is the place I'm supposed to be. And I, I feel that conviction. I know that, that it is a calling from God. I have no doubts about that. And, and if you do, then you, you simply can't be a missionary. Do you have any doubts about that? So let's, let's just take, take it on a snapshot view of Mormonism. Um, what can you do? And what can't you do? It's a good question. I think I think ultimately, you know, I used to think about that when I was younger, especially in like California. I think in America, people oh, just overall in Christianity, they say, well, what can you do? What can't you do? And ultimately, it comes down to your own choice. I can ultimately go out and go drinking every night. I can go out and sleep with whoever I wanted to. I, I can choose to do that, but I choose not to. It's not that we're not allowed to do things. It's just like as it talks about in the Bible, God's given us commandments, but he doesn't compel us to do them. So I guess some beliefs we have is we don't drink, we don't smoke, and we don't have sex before marriage. Those are some pretty big ones in the UK mm, that I think sure, yeah. are pretty, pretty controversial to our beliefs and that make us stand out. But I do know that there's a lot of benefits that come from it. Not only physical ones that any human eye can see, but also spiritual ones that God gives us. Um, I now, on this may get a little bit mildly controversial, but um, women, uh, both in Ireland and in the UK, often dress quite provocatively. Yeah. Um, do you personally feel that, do you either get, do you look at them and are a little bit tempted, or do you feel kind of sorry for them, or, and what, like, it, it, you know, it's human nature, it's biology, it's chemistry. Uh, and when there are so many women walking around scantily clad, did it ever cross your mind that this is temptation? I think, I think that can, it depends on the person, really. But it depends on what people find attractive. Like I think there are some people who who may dress a certain way to get attention, and and that might be because they feel insecure about certain things. And so, I mean, everyone loves confidence, and that's attractive. So, in a sense, like if someone needs to dress a certain way to get attention, that means they're not confident, and that's that's not attractive, really. If you don't want me touching on this issue, and if, uh, feel free not to answer if you don't want to. Um, some issues have sprung up with polygamy. Uh, if you don't mind uh, me asking about that, is polygamy um, part of Mormonism or um, the Church of the Latter-day Saints um, or whatever you would like to refer to it as? Yeah, polygamy is definitely not a part of it at all. And a lot of people, people ask us that in the streets so many times. So, so you're the Mormons, you have more than one wife. <laughs> to be honest, I couldn't. I don't know if I could do it with more than one wife. You may only get a date, right? You may only get a date, let alone. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a it's a mis what do we write? Big misconception. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a misidea. Some it's just it's not true. We don't have more than one wife. We don't believe or practice polygamy at all.